The Chicago Bulls have a fun game three in which we get contributions from a lot of players that we want to see eventually earn roles with the Chicago Bulls. We're going to talk about those players and their performances and one that I think definitely should be on the Windy City Bulls next season. We're also going to go over the release details of Kobe White's contract and the incentive part of that contract and how it affects the Bulls salary cap situation going forward. We're getting to all that plus the voicemail box right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. I'm the host here, Hayes. You guys can follow the channel right off the top if you choose to do so at Bulls Central Pod on every social media platform that we happen to be on. But let's go ahead and get into the content for today. Last night was probably one of the most fun summer league games that we've had in the yeah, brief three games that we've had. we got one more summer league game left on the schedule. The Bulls could qualify for the summer league playoffs, and if they do that, we could be talking about more games. But I want to talk about, you know, the performances from a couple of players. We're going to single out four players in this. This does not mean that there weren't other players that played pretty well. These are the four that I'm going to signal out first or, or, or separate out. And the first one up is, of course, Javon Freeman Liberty. 26 points, 6 assists, 2 steals, 9 for 17 shooting from the field, 3 for 7 from 3-point range. Javon Freeman Liberty, even he said himself, he is trying to show that he deserves an NBA spot this upcoming season. And I dropped a video late last night, even after the Summer League game, on why Javon Liberty has, J Javon Freeman Liberty, let me say the man's whole name, has deserved and probably earned a two-way contract with the Chicago Bulls. Now, the Bulls do have Adama Sinago, Justin Lewis, and then they also extended a two-way qualifying offer to Terry Taylor. Um, that does not mean that he's going to necessarily keep that. We extended a qualifying offer last year to, I believe, Malcolm Hill, and then we ended up rescinding that back as well. So, you know, anything uh, can happen when it comes to that. Two-way contracts, you can release and sign a new player to the two-way contract at any point in time. So the Bulls absolutely could look to, to sign Javon Freeman Liberty to a two-way contract, and I think he's playing his way to that. And then you never know, especially with Carly Jones having a non-guaranteed deal, which the Bulls can get out of as late as October 16th, um, if they want to open up an actual roster spot. You just never know when it comes to Javon Freeman Liberty. But go and check out that full video as well if you want kind of my thoughts on that and just more in detail on Javon Freeman Liberty. But, you know, to sum it all up, the dude is balling, just straight up balling. From Chicago, so you know you you know the Bulls always like to keep their Chicago guard in there at some point in time. So Javon Freeman Liberty is definitely turning some heads, and the Bulls are going to have to make a decision on him sooner rather than later. Because I tell you what, if the Bulls don't lock him up to a two way contract, there's going to be another team that does. All right, next up is Adama Sinago, a player who in their first summer league game looked lost, didn't have it. I don't know if he was suffering jet lag. I don't know what it was, but he it looked much better in the second summer league game, and in this summer league game, in the third one. He absolutely showed how his skill set, and yeah, it's not going to be one for one. Everybody that I'm talking about here, of course, with the caveat of it being summer league, and we kind of understand what summer league play is and isn't, right? We understand that. I hope as a family we we get that. But Adama Sinago, 15 points, nine rebounds, two blocks, two steals, seven of ten shooting, and the thing that Adama Sinago did extremely well in this game, offensively rebounded the ball and got putbacks off those offensive rebounds. The 7 of 10 shooting, the way that he got that shot, no jump shots in that, basically all putbacks, that's how you want to see Adama Sinagos operate near the rim. That's where he's going to find success, right? Not the, mo the most hugely athletic player, not the biggest player either, but again, has enough strength to operate in that middle, and he played a really good game as well. Adama Sinago showed some things last night that it was like, okay, this is what AK you know, saw and envisioned when he signed him immediately after draft night as an um, undrafted rookie. Next up is our actual draft selection. We traded two second-round picks to get him in the building, and that is Julian Phillips. He's 16 points, four rebounds, six of eight from the field, three from three from deep. And the thing that you could see immediately with Julian Phillips, with his biggest question coming in, was he going to be able to shoot? They've gotten that shot already back to how he shot in high school and the comfortability he has there. He was letting it fly. He did not hesitate on on shooting those threes, and if his three-point shot, keep in mind, our de head of player development in Peter Patton hasn't even really gotten to work with Julian Phillips yet. And when you look at the brand of defense that he has on top of all those other things, 
it's a, it's enough promising uh, things there for Julian Phillips. And if that shot's going to work out for him and that defense is where, you know, it's been rumored to be, listen, he could crack the rotation with Billy Donovan, but we got a voicemail on that I'm going to get into a little bit later. But last up but not least, Nate Darling, 16 points, three rebounds, three assists, four of six from three-point range. Nate Darling can absolutely shoot the ball, period. Coming off screens, he can shoot the ball. He can let it fly. Now, I don't, I'm not ready to say he, he deserves any type of NBA or even a two-way contract, but if the Bulls can keep them in the G League system, in their G League system, and maybe develop them. We talked about, I talked about it on the Javon Freeman Liberty video, how important it is for a team like the Chicago Bulls that does not operate as a luxury tax-paying team to be able to really turn their G League system into a development league, right? To the where they're developing role players. Not necessarily saying they're going to develop the next star or anything like that, but if they can develop a role play or role players, right? Every two, three years have a role player that comes up through their G League system that eventually gives them production at the NBA level. That's where you get the most value and 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 things out of players that went undrafted, that maybe were drafted in the second round, get cut by their team. That's what I, how I want to see the Bulls use the Windy City Bulls next season. That's how I want to see them use the G League going forward. That is why here we're going to be starting the G League review where we're going to be giving once a week G League update episodes exclusively, playing highlights, going over some of the players that shine, kind of looking at it like the minor leagues in baseball and just kind of giving you guys an update so you know who may be coming up through that system. Because I'm telling you, if the Bulls can do that and do it well, we may we, we're going to get, even if you hit on one, two, every three to five years, every five years even, it pays off in the long run for sure. Especially when we're talking about a team like the Miami Heat who just really developed a lot of undrafted guys themselves. That's how the future of the NBA is going to be. I talked about on yesterday's episode how now with the new penitive luxury tax, there's going to be a highlight on development. And I want the Bulls to be ahead of it. They already know how to operate beneath the luxury tax. They've done that since its inception. But now you need to find a way to develop on top of that and you can get the most quality and value out of some of these guys. So overall, here's the thing. AK might have cooked this draft, draft night more than we see. Now, it remains to be seen. We got answers that are going to be told over years, right? It's not going to be immediate or anything like that. I know we live in a microwave society where everybody wants everything right then. But AK might have done some cooking, right? When you look at Julian Phillips, especially if Julian Phillips' shot comes along, hey, he has the potential to be one of the best value draftees in that draft when you look at the brand of defense that he brings. So, and then Adama Sinago could be a player that eventually does play a big man role for the Chicago Bulls. I think, you know, initially in that rookie season, he's not going to play very much, even though two-way players can play up to 50 games in the NBA now. But, you know, ultimately, we'll see, man. We'll see. But moving on from that, yesterday we did get more details on Kobe White's contract, which was initially reported $33 million deal uh, with a $7 million in bonuses, right, and in incentives. Well, it comes out that the deal is more like $36 million guaranteed uh, with a with possible incentives of $1.33 million every single year on that, which pushes it up to $39 million. So this puts this changes a little bit with the Bulls uh, luxury tax. I still think that it's still a very value contract for Kobe White. When you look at it, it averages out right about to the mid-level exception. But keep in mind, just like with everything else in the NBA, the mid-level exception rises every single year, basically. So he's going to be a little bit below. This first year, he's coming in at a, a little over $11 million as a cap hit for the Chicago Bulls. So he's he's below that that uh, that mid-level exception. And he's going to continue to be around that, hover around that mid-level exception type value. And at a three-year deal for a player that is still going to be 26, 27 years old when this contract is over with, I still think that it represents a hell of a value for the Chicago Bulls, and it gives Kobe White reasons to keep working, keep improving his game, to get those extra $3 million in bonuses. And I know some people may look at it and say, what's $3 million for a uh, for a basketball player? But still, I listen, I want all my money possible. I'm sure Kobe White wants all his money possible. So there's enough to look at that. And, and, and you know, it's incentivized, Kobe, and that's why it's called incentives, right? To continue working, continue rounding out his game, and the Bulls are going to be the ones that eventually reap the benefits of that, I do think. So still a very value contract. Does change things a little bit for the Chicago Bulls. So right now, uh, we sit at, we, we had about, we had almost $10 million in um, below the luxury tax. Right now, we're at $8.54 million 
below the luxury tax. So what does that change for the Bulls? They still can use the remaining part of their mid-level exception, which they have $6 million left of that mid-level exception, to go out and get talent. Now, we know free agent market is really drying up. It seems like players like P.J. Washington uh, and, and Io may just take their qualifying offers and roll with it that way. But at least leaves the Bulls that spending power. We still have our biannual exception as well. The disabled player exception still has not been approved, which is weird enough, right? We are now 10 days removed from the Bulls filing, officially filing for that disabled player exception, and we haven't heard a peep back yet. It could come at any day. Once it is approved, I'll have an episode out shortly thereafter, just, you know, going over it's approved, uh, how the Bulls can use it, things like that. But, you know, we're still kind of waiting on that, and that may be why the Bulls have been relatively quiet. But we have to ask ourselves now, looking at what the Bulls did, right? Javon Carter, we know what he's going to be. We understand what he brings to this team. I think he's going to be the starting point guard. We'll end up seeing. Kobe White, value deal, absolutely. Nikola Vucevic, value deal, absolutely. Torrey Craig, extremely value deal, getting him at the veteran minimum, right? And then you look at drafting Julian Phillips, who I will say that ah, we got a voicemail. I'll get into that soon on the voicemail. But, you know, so ultimately, uh, we, we, we pretty much know how we're going to roll back. Now, we still got some open roster spots and decisions to make. The Bulls still have $18 million in cap holds. When you look at Derrick Jones Jr., $6 million cap hold for him, they can renounce it or that'll go away the moment he signs with another team. Javante Green has a $2 million cap hold. I have a video out on, on J- Javante Green as well. If, if the Bulls could, re- could bring him back at a vet minimum to kind of br- be a depth piece on that bench, especially if Daylon Terry isn't ready. And then we also have uh, Terry Taylor. Who, who still has a cap hold, he has a two-way qualifying offer out there, and then Justin Lewis as well. So ultimately right now, the Chicago Bulls have decisions to make on their own internal free agents. Io DeSumo still has his $5 million, a little over $5 million qualifying offer that was extended to him. He has to decide whether he's going to take that qualifying offer or if him and the Chicago Bulls can work out a long-term extension. I do think, and I've said this, that Io is probably going to take that one-year qualifying offer. And what that does, it puts pressure on him to perform, but it also puts pressure on the franchise to decide what they want to do. Io, if he does that, will be an unrestricted free agent next year. Now, that can amount to a lot of nothing, especially if Io continues to disappoint or if he doesn't play or if a player like Javon Freeman Liberty, anyone else really steps up and really takes those those minutes from Io as well. But if the Bulls, who I still do think want to avoid young players going away and maybe developing somewhere else, they may be motivated to try to work out something long-term with him and his agent. Again, they would not be in this position had they given him a three-year deal like they gave Marco Simonovic, but woulda, coulda, shoulda on that. I'm not going to beat a dead horse with that. I think my feelings on that are out there and quite known at this point. But the Bulls still have some decisions to make. We still could potentially have up to three roster spots open on this team, depending on what they do with some of their options and what happens with Io DeSumo. So the Bulls got to figure some things out, man. And, uh, you know, I think we're going to get shortly after the disabled player exception gets approved. I think that's when we'll start getting a lot of answers on some of those things that are kind of hanging out there for the Chicago Bulls. But, hey, let me know what you guys think. Do you think that anybody that I just listed between DJJ, Javante Green, Io DeSumo, who I still think Io is going to be back, but do you think there is a chance to bring back DJJ or Javante Green on a vet minimum contract as some depth for this team as they go forward into the regular season? Let me know what you guys think on all that down below. Oh, also, keep in mind, the Bulls can only have three two-way contract spots if they carry 15 players on the roster. If they leave a roster spot open and carry only 14 players, they don't get that third two-way contract spot. So that's something to look out for as well as we're talking about Javon uh, Freeman Liberty potentially getting a two-way contract offer out there. So let's go ahead and get into that uh, and get into the voicemail that we have. This one's from Quentin. What's up, Hayes? This is Quentin from Let's Talk Bulls. I just wanted to leave a voicemail and talk about Julian Phillips. Um, been watching him in the summer league. I know he started out kind of okay his first game, but in the second game, I think he's showing that he is a really good piece for this team. Um, he's a good energy player. He tries on the offensive rebound side. He can shoot a little bit. I definitely think he's going to be a good addition to this team. And when you look at defense, especially if he is defense ready, for this team, I can just imagine him and P. Will in a small ball lineup. Um, I definitely think we're going to be a really good defensive team this year, and I can't wait to see it. Let me know your thoughts. Have a good night. 
First up, shout out to Quentin from Let's Talk Bulls, a big supporter here, and he brings up Julian Phillips. And here's what I'll say. I've, I've said this before, and I said this over on Locked on Bulls. I'll bring it over here as well. I know that the common mindset from a lot of Bulls fans when they hear about young players is initially go into the knee jerk. Oh, Bill, Billy Bubblegum Donovan ain't going to play, right? But we have had four rookies come through here so far. Two have played early, two have not. Patrick Williams, Ayodele Sumu played Minutes and heavy parts of the rotation in their rookie years. Yes, there were circumstances there, but their defense was one of the things that got them on the court. Dalen Terry, while we do expect and think for him to have really good defensive potential, that shot hasn't come along too well for him in the summer league so far. But he did, and I think part of his development plan was to go through the G League. And then we have Marco Simonovic, who maybe Marco just wasn't that good. Who knows? But those are, are the examples that we have. But when you look at Julian Phillips, the fact that he is a legitimate four that has legitimate size, can probably play small ball five as well, which Billy Donovan does like, if that defense is real and legit for Julian Phillips, I do think he can carve himself out a role on this team. Now, I'm not saying a big role. I'm not even saying a consistent role. But I do think that he can and has a chance to be used some, right? I'm not putting a high percentage on it because, again, I don't trust Billy Donovan. But there is some potential there. But overall, looking at what he brings, even if he does have to spend a, league, a year primarily in the G League, it'd be unfortunate, right? But if he does do that, you get some, a chance to really add the weight that's needed, adjust to that weight, right? Really be ready to go and, and make a name for himself and work on that shot. Have Peter Patton work on him a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, right? So that's what it does allow. But I do think and I hope that Julian Phillips' defense is good enough that that gets him a role on the Chicago Bulls team, even if it's spot minutes. You look at his size, you look at his length, you look at that 40-inch vertical, you look at the fact that if this Bulls team, especially off the bench, does get out in transition, how he can yam it on people. The offensive rebounding that he brings as well, keep in mind, offensive rebounding is one of our biggest weak spots on this team. Some of that is because of Billy Donovan's system, but it is one of the biggest weak spots on the team as well. I think that there is a path for Julian Phillips to get a role on this team in his rookie year. The bigger question is, is Billy Donovan going to open that path? And I guess that remains to be seen, but just as a prospect, I'm liking Julian Phillips. And if that shot is legit and, they, and they're going to be able to beat something to be relied on, I'm not saying he's going to take three three-pointers a game at the NBA level, but if he can hit the open three, especially the corner three, which comes naturally in, this, in a Billy Donovan offense, hey, the sky's the limit for Julian Phillips. But you guys can let me know what you guys think down below but that's it for today make sure you guys are following the show at bull central pod you can send us any feedback questions comments concerns bull at gmail.com lastly you can leave a text message and our voicemail for the show the number to do so 773-270-2799 we are the number one spot for everything chicago bulls related because of you guys and like i liked in every episode on go bulls love you guys see you right if you can y'all peace this has been a presentation of the Break Break Media. Media.